Thank you, Prof, for giving me the opportunity. Uh, uh, Dr. GCP, thank you for inviting the team from Singapore. Um, I think I've been working with Prof Nyam and uh, Yujia from the Department of Surgery for HoloLens, and uh, we have been quite fortunate to have the opportunity to use HoloLens in the Neurosurgery OR. And so far, our experience has been excellent, and we are hoping that with our collaboration, we can come up with newer projects to bring mixed reality right into the Neurosurgery OR. Um, so without uh, delaying it further, I'll just bring uh, through some of the cases that we have actually used HoloLens and our experience so far. Sorry. Okay, uh, I think uh, like it was alluded previously as well, um, I think intraoperative navigation is currently a very essential component of neurosurgical operations, but um, one of some of the major disadvantages is that it's a 2D projection of images and you know you have to constantly change your focus between the surgical field as well as the neural navigation screen and um, only the pre-registered instruments with the available neural navigation system can be used. However, the recent progress in mixed reality technology has actually attempted to overcome these disadvantages but so far the usage of mixed reality has mainly been in education, not so much in surgery. Very few studies are currently available to assess its accuracy. So I think we just wanted to uh, bring uh, how HoloLens looks like. I think we have seen in the previous slides as well, it's very portable. This is me wearing the HoloLens during one of the operations, which lasted for about three hours. And I would say it was very comfortable and uh, there was no surgeon fatigue at the end of it. And it was very easy to switch between the uh, through the HoloLens what you see or directly through your own eyes what you're looking at where the surgical field is concerned. So let me just bring you through the cases right away. So the first case that we had was this very deep seated extra axial tum tumor right at the posterior fox. And a patient had previously actually undergone a resection already and the histology was consistent with the atypical meningioma. And this recurrent lesion was actually growing in size. So we used the standard staff S8 neural navigation for intraoperative planning. And subsequently we rendered a 3D image using the HoloLens as well. And this was actually one of our very first cases where we attempted to see how accurate the rendering is and whether there's actually any correlation between um, the HoloLens and the uh, standard neural navigation that we use in the OR. So these are some of the very first pictures that I took. So this was before the draping. So I think we all know, even as residents, we often feel the, that it's very difficult to actually navigate, especially when the patient is in a prone position. But with HoloLens, it was very easy because all I had to do was use the pinna of the ear uh, on bilaterally to actually try to get the image to come into, um, uh, uh, to be accurately projected onto the patient's head. And uh, this is right after the patient was draped. And in fact, there was really not much drift that I thought happened after the patient was actually draped. I was wearing the HoloLens throughout uh, between and after draping the patient as well. So I'll bring you through the video. This is the very first video that we took. So here is my colleague who's actually holding the, um, who's actually holding the probe. And as you can see, he's actually pointing at the tumor using the probe and it actually correlates where I am actually looking at uh, through the HoloLens where the tumor is actually located. And we thought it was very interesting that the accuracy was so accurate because this was a, just a 1.5 centimeter lesion and we felt that we can actually explore the accuracy of HoloLens much further. So um, I think the surface marking, the issue definitely was that the surface matching was definitely relatively subjective. And uh, we were worried whether after draping, there would be a loss of surface marking. But because this was one of our very first cases and we are still trying to uh, troubleshoot that part of it. Uh, so this was one of the first disadvantages we thought of the HoloLens. But overall, the experience was very interesting to use it, especially during the operation. Um, this was relatively on the surface meningioma, just a uh, left frontal convexity meningioma, relatively large. And um, we thought it would be interesting to see how things look like, especially for the junior residents, whether it actually helps to delineate the anatomy a bit better. 
Uh, as you can see, this was uh, projected before the patient was draped. Very nice, can see the contour of the meningioma very nicely. I didn't take any images where I tried to see if there was an accuracy between the stuff marking the anterior and the posterior margins of the tumor, but uh, uh, basically it was about the same as to what I expected on the HoloLens as well. This was right after draping, so I will show you some of the, uh, the when I used the slicer to actually cut through, and this is my, my colleague actually using the probe again to mark the anterior border of the tumor. And um, it was really very nice because you can actually see the, um, if I just bring you back a bit, uh, you can actually see the venous structures uh, the, uh, around it very, very clearly. And HoloLens even allows you to adjust the contrast. So whether you want the tumor to be highlighted or you want the blood vessels around on the contrasted scan to be highlighted, it's actually very, very easy doing that as well. Uh, the last uh, case that we actually tried, uh, in which we actually uh, used uh, Prof. Michael Shugru's software, the Omniscient software, which is basically an AI-based uh, connectomics to actually look at the white fiber method tracks. Uh, this is still in the pipeline, but we, uh, it's one of our very first cases to see if even the white method tracks can actually be projected uh, using, uh, using the HoloLens and whether that further improves uh, surgical planning. And uh, this was basically a metastatic lung lesion, relatively very large. And we just wanted to see where the corticospinal tracks are being projected. So uh, we actually used Prof. Michael Shugru's software in this case, and this is what was projected on the stuff. So you can see that the CSTs are actually draped right around the tumor, except for a very small window where there was no tracks involved. And we thought we will use this as the point of entry to prevent any further damage to the CST. Uh, and this is in light with keeping with the neuro-oncological functional balance to actually achieve maximal resection while preserving neuro-oncological outcomes. And like I said, we are working with him using his software. And uh, the main aim of this case was to see whether we can render these tracks, which use the AR technology to allow the surgeon for real-time visualization during tumoral resection. Um, just some images that we have actually taken from his uh, uh, slides and his software. So basically, you can uh, uh, project the sensory motor tracks, the uh, language tracks, as well as the visual tracks, depending upon where the location of the tumor is. And it's an AI-based software. And as you can see, the number of permutations that actually go through to result in those uh, tracks. Uh, this was what we projected uh, first through the HoloLens to see how the tracks actually look like. So we thought it actually looks like a Cauliflower, but actually, when you project it onto the patient with the MRT, really very nicely. You can see the the small window of opportunity that we have to to prevent any further destruction of the tracks during the tumor resection. But again, a very nice rendering of the image. Um, uh, you can further adjust the contrast, and we are also working with uh, VSI and Microsoft to see whether we can get color rendering of these tracks. And just some more uh, intra-op images after the patient had been dripped. So similar experience again, a very nice rendering and um, relatively good accuracy was maintained even after draping. Um, so as the title of the today's talk also says neuroanatomy and mixed reality, um, like I previously said, I think it's very beautiful to look at the tumor as well as the MRI images and you know, the residents actually feel they can actually appreciate the anatomy a lot better in 3D than in 2D with uh, especially visualization of the vascular structures around the lesions. Uh, and we actually tried with the spine as well. We did have a lot of issues in terms of trying to do surface matching for the spine because um, there's movement in the, uh, the spine, which cannot be accounted for once the patient has been positioned as compared to what uh, the first scans, when the first scans were actually taken, but we feel that it's actually good, very good for anatomy learning as well. So you can see this was what the extracted CT image of the spine looked like. So um, I was trying to position using my hand, but I really did not get a very good positioning because of the shift in the patient's head when the patient was flexed for this uh, this procedure, but I think for the residents learning, it's a very, very good opportunity because it's very nice to see the 
uh, the joints, the whole uh, anatomy of the spine. And uh, I think like it was shown in the previous presentation, you can use the MI, you can use the CT, depending upon what kind of structures you're looking at. So this is just me trying to get it in, in, in line with the patient. But unfortunately, we felt for spine, we still a lot of work needs to be done. Uh, this was just, again, the same patient that I showed earlier. So again, if we go very slowly on this video, you can actually see how nicely the vascular structures are being projected. This is even better when we are talking about, for example, medial sphenoid being meningiomas, and we want to look at the anatomy uh, of the cavernous sinus of the MCAs. Uh, I think it's very, very good for learning for, for, for the residents in particular. Um, so we feel that it actually provides a very exciting avenue to explore, in, especially in neuro-oncology surgery. And, but further work definitely needs to be done in establishing its accuracy when compared to the gold standard neural navigation. Um, I think I will hand over to Prof. Yo to further input and uh, summarize the whole talk as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So thanks, uh, Swati. I think that was uh, an excellent uh, summary of the work we've done.